Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I'm Serene, and today's video is all about cleaning out my wardrobe in preparation for my first ever capsule wardrobe. So this is going to be for spring 2018. I briefly mentioned that I had been considering a capsule wardrobe for some time now in my recent fashion video. I purchased a few basic key pieces that I wanted to add to my wardrobe. And I had mentioned how I wanted to start a capsule wardrobe, but I really was kind of scared about it. And because of what I do for a living, I do need a lot of event outfits. I am going for it and this is going to be the first video in a series. This video I'm going to show you what my closet and wardrobe kind of looks like. I take everything and put it on my bed and I literally go through every single piece of clothing I own and I decide what I'm going to do with it and kind of walk you through the steps. But when I mentioned that I wanted to do a capsule wardrobe, I got a couple questions about what a capsule wardrobe is. First thing I want to share with you guys is the official definition of a capsule wardrobe, which I think has definitely morphed and changed in the last few years. Capsule wardrobe is a term coined by Susie Fox, the owner of London boutique called Wardrobe in the 1970s. According to Fox, a capsule wardrobe is a collection of a few essential items of clothing that don't go out of fashion, such as skirts, trousers, and coach coats which can then be augmented with seasonal pieces. This idea was popularized by American designer Donna Karen, who in 1985 released an influential capsule collection of seven interchangeable work pieces. The term is widely used in the British and American fashion media and has been the subject of several popular television series. The term has come to refer to a collection of clothing that is composed of interchangeable items only to maximize the number of outfits that can be created. The aim is to have an outfit suitable for any occasion without owning excessive items of clothing. This is usually achieved by buying what are considered to be key or staple items and coordinating colors. I'd heard about it on television and by stylists and in magazines, but when I really started paying attention was from Anna, from the Anna Edit here on YouTube as well as her blog. She really wanted to look into capsule wardrobe and she actually started doing one and I sh it was a few years ago. And I don't know that she's still as strict, but she definitely still sticks to key pieces and I love, love, love her aesthetic and she was able to do it. So I really was inspired by her. And Anna actually had heard about capsule wardrobes from listening to Caroline Joy, who is the blogger of Unfancy. I became addicted in reading Unfancy and going backlogging and seeing where this capsule wardrobing situation kind of happened for Caroline. And I think she breaks it down really beautifully and that's where Anna got it from and that's where I'm getting it from. I also really love um, Allie Cherry here on YouTube and she also did a capsule wardrobe for many years before, I think for actually just for a full year, and now she's no longer doing that because it's kind of helped her break some of these bad habits that I'm trying to break myself. For my entire life since I started shopping for clothes, I have a ton of items in my wardrobe at any given time that still has tags on it and or have not been worn. It's not just like one shirt or one dress that I haven't worn yet. It is like a whole rack full of clothes that I have not used and most likely will never get to. And the reason I feel like that happens is because I for a very long time and can still do this, have an impulse to shop when I'm not feeling good about myself, about life, or I'm just sad. A lot of the times, and mostly in my 20s and even now, I find myself shopping for the instant gratification. I don't do that so much with my beauty and skincare anymore, but I still do that with shopping for clothes. I'm not truly getting the joy out of these purchases because they're not like something I've been wanting or dying to have. It's not something I need and it's not something I'm even enjoying later after the purchase, which is unfortunate. And it's a huge waste of resources financially as well as being an irresponsible consumer. I'm definitely learning more and educating myself and trying to be better about making sure the items I no longer use are being sold or donated to someone who actually is going to get use out of it or being ethically recycled, not ending up in the landfill. I definitely am trying to be more aware of that because so much of the wasted 
fashion is in our landfills and a lot of the materials we use in fast fashion is not biodegradable and is very harmful for our environment not only when producing but when it ends up in the landfill well i am not 100 percent sustainable i'm not 100 percent eco i am trying to be more aware and making small changes that i feel i can actually achieve and moving forward from there it's something i'm aware of and it's something i'm trying to be better about and the first step is trying to not consume things that I'm never gonna wear and end up throwing it away. Two, Chris and I are in our 30s and whether or not we consume things without thinking about it, we definitely prefer quality over quantity at this point in our life and we find that quality means more to us and we value it more anyways. It makes more sense for us to invest our money and spend our money on one really good piece versus 20 somewhat okay pieces or cheap pieces that will fall apart in a wash and we want to support the brands that provide that. My main goals for my personal capsule wardrobe and doing this huge clear out for spring is one, I've been feeling really uninspired, really blocked creatively, and also just kind of like fed up with myself. And I feel like I can do better and I want a change. So I definitely wanted to challenge myself and step into this fear of not having enough. I definitely have that mentality. Um, I. I was raised by immigrant parents where we saved everything, we hoarded everything. If it was free, if it was cheap, we would buy it and save it and hoard it from food to random things we would never use or need. I don't know that it's all immigrant parents, but it's definitely my immigrant parent experience. That has definitely seeped into my personal adult life. I want to feel clearer. I want to feel less cluttered. I want to get the use out of the things I do have. I want to love everything I own. And I want to be okay with having less. I want to challenge myself creatively in making different outfits with what I do have. When I have too much in my closet, I can tend to wear the same three things because I'm so overwhelmed at looking at my closet. I stop doing the instant gratification and shopping therapy. There's nothing wrong with shopping, I just was doing it during times of stress and depression when I really should try and find a better way of coping because Instant gratification isn't helping and it doesn't really do anything other than spending money that I don't need to spend, um, taking a broom I don't want to give up, and cluttering my life. My biggest fear is not having enough pieces to create enough looks for three months before I can shop again. And I also worry that my life is very up in the go, so if I suddenly have to go on a trip or suddenly there's like a night gala or something like that, I don't have the clothes for it. Typically a capsule wardrobe consists of 37 pieces, 9 pairs of shoes, 9 bottoms, 15 tops, 2 dresses, 2 jackets slash outerwear, and this does not include your loungewear, your pajamas, your workout clothes, or any like evening wear. For me, I have a small little section in my closet that is going to be reserved for events slash fancy slash evening wear. I'm saving off the section and this isn't really my capsule wardrobe but it is there for me because I do go to quite a lot of events and I do need clothes for that. If I feel that I might have another event that I need to purchase a dress for, I will be okay with purchasing that as long as I keep in mind that is this something I can wear again to a different event and reserving this space for kind of like fancy event clothes. I'm not going to be as strict about my shoes. I love every pair of shoes I own. I did clear out my shoes as well when I did the wardrobe clear out so I'm gonna keep everything that I love and I'm not gonna only be allowed to wear so many pairs I'm not gonna stick strict to the 37 items but I am going to come pretty darn close I do have quite a lot of clothes still I feel like and honestly I would like to pare it down even more and these are the steps on how I cleared it out this is kind of a spring wardrobe clear out in preparation for capsule wardrobe so I will follow up with another video once my capsule wardrobe is set so for my first go around I did print out the worksheet available on unfancy.com and I'll link that in the description box a capsule wardrobe is basically I think of it as in fiscal quarters and I'm I'm starting in Q2, which is spring, which is April to June 2018. That's three months of no buying until the last two weeks of this capsule wardrobe where I go through everything and prep for summer. And there's also a one page or a one sheeter that breaks everything down even further. And this is for those of you guys who don't want to be as strict, but maybe need a little bit help in 
making your wardrobe a little more efficient. The first thing that was recommended to do is to draw a pie chart of your lifestyle. I hate these things. I don't feel like my pie chart was very effective because I feel like Pie charts just make me nervous. Geometry makes me nervous. My life breaks down into work slash home work. Um, I'm home a lot working, and when I'm not home, I'm at events for work. So while I spend 90% of my life working, it's very different. One, I can literally be in sweats and a t-shirt, and the other, I have to be put together and look professional. So even though half my life is really revolved around uh, being out and about, um, I can get away with being pretty casual as well. And then the other kind of slice of my pie is working out and lounging. So I think I'm pretty good in my workout clothes and lounge just because I don't feel like I need to update that. I buy what I want every like winter and when it's on sale for Black Friday and I'm pretty good with that. Leggings, sports bras, throw on a tank top over that very rarely have personal time and for most of my personal time I feel like I can get away with a lot of my casual work wear or I'm in lounge wear because I'm hanging out at home with my husband. The next section is going to be special events and travel. What is coming up in the next three months that might require you to plan for in terms of wardrobe? So this is kind of hard for me because I don't know my travel schedule that far in advance but a lot of people do like Normal people with normal jobs tend to know when they take vacations, but even then things can pop up. So I'm not really going to worry too much about that because again, I will be flexible. I have put away my winter clothes and my summer clothes and my fall clothes up in the bins. Have to, I can pull from there for vacations or for travels in different climates. But for the most part, I think I'm going to be okay. If it's something really that special, I'm okay shopping for it as long as I'm careful that I'm shopping for that event as well as making sure the pieces I purchase are wearable after that event. The next thing you need to consider is your weather and your climate. Um, I live in LA, which can be pretty temperate, but at the same time, really weird at the, like randomly. So I Googled it and we do have pretty mild climate from April through June. It's supposed to be anywhere between 55 degrees to 73 degrees. Some rain, mostly sunny, chilly mornings and evenings. Sometimes it feels way colder than 55 degrees, but that's also why I kept some of my sweaters out even though I know once we get into May and June, I'm really not gonna wear these sweaters whatsoever because it just gets so hot. And I'm someone who gets overheated really easily and and I need fabrics that can breathe, I need to not feel suffocated, I need to feel like I'm not sweating. And you're going to do a section of word associations, and this is just things that come to mind when you think about your wardrobe, what describes your style. So I just started with basics, neutrals, and then from there I kind of went on into like brands I like and brands I tend to find a lot of things I like and places I tend to spend my money. So I just keep going with word association and this is just to prep your mind. So then the next step is what is not working for you? And that kind of goes from the pieces you own and you never wear and why. So I find that unique fabrics that are loud are just not me. Discomfort, anything that's misshaped, if it's too tight, if it doesn't breathe, again, I get really hot easily. I get itchy. Stains. There's things that I have stains on and I never wear because I'm embarrassed that there's a stain, but I won't let it go either. Tops that don't flatter my giant chest. Um, I know my chest isn't huge in compared to a lot of people out there, but I am a 32D, so my cup size is really big from the size of my rib cage, and I'm rather petite, but my boobs do make me look bigger if I'm wearing something that doesn't flatter the larger chest area. Then I went into my closet and picked out eight pieces that I absolutely love. I wear over and over and over again. And I listed them and I told myself why I love these pieces. I love my V-neck baggy waffle blue top from Urban Outfitters. And it's because it's comfortable, it's soft, it's versatile, it's a neutral color, but it's still a color. And I wear the death out of that thing. Um, so just go through some of your pieces that you really love and write down why you love it. So what is working for me? Comfort, neutrals, no pinching. I love gray, I love soft fabrics. I love things that are easy to wash, especially 
especially if it's not dry clean. I love wrap dresses. I think wrap dresses are really flattering on my body. I like ankle length pants because then I don't have to hem them and I don't have all this extra fabric. I also like mid-rise to high-rise pants because I feel like they flatter my body and my shape a lot better, especially with the longer torso. I really love breathable fabrics. If the fabric is breathable, I don't feel like I smell. I also feel like um, when I get warm, I don't feel claustrophobic in the fabric. Then I write down my go-to pieces. This is kind of like what I wear all the time repeatedly. And it's loose t-shirts that can be knotted in the front or on the side, comfy knits that are soft. I go to uniform. Um, I listed seven kind of go-to uniforms for myself. The first being comfy knit and a skinny pair of jeans and my slides. My wrap dress and ankle boots, jumpsuit and my pumps. I wear all the time. So comfort for me is really key and I kind of repeat the same looks over and over again just with different tops or bottoms. Then the next step is to list out the brands that you love and look at your closet, your favorite pieces and where are they from. Next section is all about color schemes. Um, you can be as fancy as you want and as creative as you want. I personally just wrote down some of my favorite colors. Mainly I wear a lot of whites, blacks, and grays with blue jeans. And then I like accents of blues and browns and neutrals for my accents colors like the bop the poppier colors I love reds greens and pinks now that I kind of know more about myself and I know what I love and the brands I love and how things have to fit on me for me to actually wear it you are going to empty your closet I emptied my closet absolutely a hundred percent completely I threw everything on the bed and then I emptied out my dresser as well because I was hiding a lot of stuff in the dresser that I wasn't wearing on top of my closet I have an entire walk-in closet to myself plus two dresser drawers to myself that were full of clothes I wasn't getting use out of and the next step is to go through every single piece of clothing on your bed or in your entire house and decide whether or not you are going to donate it, recycle it, um, or you can have a maybe keep pile where you are quite not ready to let it go but you're not sure and you put that away and you store it and if you still don't wear it or miss it after three or six months, you can toss it or sell it or recycle it. The items to keep and then there's also a pile of um, off-season items. I divided my clothing into donate slash sell recycle, off-season, nostalgia, and keep. Nostalgia was I found some sweatshirts that were from high school and means a lot to me. There's a couple shirts that my mom had bought me that I just can't let go of because I remember shopping with her for them. And while I'm not gonna wear those shirts anymore, I can't let them go because it's a memory of me and my mom. I'm gonna put those away in a bin that's labeled nostalgia, label the date, and put that in storage. Once you've put every piece of item in piles, and I actually hung up the pieces I was going to keep out for spring and I'm gonna wear back on a rack, and I'm left with a rack of clothes that I think might work for spring or that I need to wear right now because it's not quite spring just yet. I'm gonna do all my laundry and make sure everything is out and I'm gonna try wearing these pieces for the next week or so and I did do that. I wore what was available on my rack. It's really interesting because I became way more creative. I was putting things together better but I was also spending less time figuring out what I was trying to wear. Immediately I noticed some time-saving benefits and just feeling good about my outfit because I kept these pieces because I wanted to keep them and I love them enough to want to try and make it work and I just felt that I was getting more use out of everything I had. Now that I've had my wardrobe out for a while, I did need to, I do need to edit and also add a couple pieces for spring. First thing I realized I needed to add to my shopping list is a pair of black joggers that can be dressed up or dressed down. Two is, I knew this going into it, I wanted to add two short to mid-length dresses and most likely from Reformation for spring. So something a little bit lighter, not black, not 
super dark or bold, something very fresh, very light, very spring-esque, so maybe a light pink, a blue, um, maybe a neutral or a white even, and I want two of those dresses in my wardrobe, and these aren't necessarily for events, but more for like an afternoon tea, baby shower, a nicer meeting, work meeting, but not so casual where I can wear jeans, or a daytime event. And then I wanted to add a plain white long sleeve shirt, and this could be a button up, a a v-neck, um, a straight crew neck, or something. I needed a white long sleeve shirt that I can use for layering. I needed two white t-shirts, either a muscle tank or another one of these but in white. I wear a lot of white t-shirts and they really go with everything and it's my favorite piece of clothing. So while I already have a v-neck that's white and a uh, scoop neck that's white. Chris and I looked at my wardrobe and we're like, you know, I'm gonna need more white shirts because I'm gonna wear, I could wear a white t-shirt five days a week. Then a pretty white spring top is my other item on the shopping list. So it could be a corset top, it could be off the shoulder top, it could be a lace top, but most likely white because once again, white is my favorite color to wear around spring and summer. It's pretty much my favorite color to wear. It's not really a color, it's a lack of color. I've already found two out of my shopping list. What I really need to add now is two spring dresses is a plain white long sleeve, another white top that's casual, and then a pretty white top. So that's really not that many items for my shopping list, and I'm really excited to go shopping with a purpose and an intention and with a budget in mind. That is where I'm at right now with my current spring wardrobe clear out slash prepping for a spring capsule wardrobe. If you guys are trying out a capsule wardrobe or if you've been considering it, please let me know in the comment section. I really need all the support I can get right now because I am quite nervous about this, especially for what I do. And I'm quite nervous that you guys are gonna hate my Instagram feed because I'm gonna be wearing the same thing over and over and over again. But do stay tuned for another video about my capsule wardrobe once it's set. I have my entire wardrobe ready to share with you guys here on this channel. So don't forget to subscribe and turn on bell notifications in case uh, YouTube doesn't let you know that I upload a new video, turn on that notification. But just know I upload every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sundays. So I don't know if this type of video is interesting to you, but enough people were curious about what I was going to be doing for my capsule wardrobe and encouraged me to that I did decide to sit down and make this video and film myself kind of purging my wardrobe. It is really disastrous. It's almost embarrassing and the sad thing is this was me after I already purged multiple times living here lived here in this apartment for a year and two months now a year and two or three months and it's really kind of sad because I've purged multiple times since I've been living here and to see how much I still had and I think it was really eye-opening when you just pull everything you own out and put it on the bed because then you're just like holy crap and I thought it was only gonna have to take me like a couple hours because I had purged so many times and I really didn't buy that many clothes or I really stopped shopping at fast fashion months ago this took me over two, three days period to really clean everything out and it completely ate up my whole day when I pulled everything out. Definitely set time aside, like set a weekend aside for yourself if you're gonna do this and if you haven't purged in a while, you definitely need like multiple days I feel like. It was very eye-opening to see how much I actually did have and how much um, I wasn't getting use out of. Until next time, I hope to see you guys right back here every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope this was helpful if you guys were considering it. And if anything, it's spring. It's time to do that spring cleaning. So hopefully you learned some tips on how you can clean out your wardrobe even if you're not doing a capsule wardrobe. So until next time, I'll see you guys right back here. Bye.